Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Brandy and I had skin cancer. So I'm going to post a few pictures throughout this video. Um, so if you don't like stitches and you don't like you know, wounds and flesh and stuff like that, you may want to bypass this video and not watch. So this video today is going to be a little bit more on the serious side. Usually I like to keep my videos nice and airy because we talk about fashion and styling and fun things like that. But this is an experience I thought I would share with you just so you can kind of be aware. About last year, I guess like around maybe August of last year, I noticed this tiny little mole, teeny tiny little mole on the side of my nose that just seemed to kind of pop up out of nowhere. And I didn't think too much about it because I have moles and freckles everywhere and they just sort of pop up whenever they feel like it. So I wasn't too concerned, but then around May of this year, 2022, I felt that that mole was starting to look a little off. And I gotta be honest with you, I would not have noticed that it was off because I'm gonna pop up a picture right here of what that mole looked like. And it is nothing. You can see from the picture, it literally looks like nothing. The only way I could tell that mole was a little different is because I am, I am blind as a bat. And so when I do my makeup, I use one of those super magnifying mirrors. It's like the five times magnifying mirror. So everything on my face looks really big. My pores look big, the pimples look big, the blackheads look big, everything looks big. And I noticed right in the center of that tiny little mole, it looked like there was a little blackhead, but it wouldn't go away. You know, I, I scraped at it and it didn't go away. It started to bleed, which is not a good sign if it starts to bleed. So I thought I'm just gonna make an appointment with a dermatologist, get them to check it out, and then find out it's nothing and be on with my life. So I made an appointment. I found a dermatologist that took my insurance and I made an appointment and I went in for the, the consultation and she looked at it and the doctor was, she was so sweet. She was like one of the nicest people I have ever met. She looked at it and said, you know what? Let's just schedule a biopsy just to make sure. And I said, does it look like anything suspicious? And she's like, mm, not really. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know. She said, I, we should do the biopsy just to make sure. So I said, okay. So I scheduled it for August 31st, 2022. So August 31st came and I went in for the biopsy. Walked in, they sat me down in this little dentist-like chair. She cleaned the area, which I think is like betadine or iodine. And it was like this yellow color. She put a little bit of lidocaine in a needle, stuck it in my nose. I barely felt it. And she numbed me up. So then the nurse came in to help her out. She took a little scalpel, cut a little piece out of my nose. I did not even feel it. Later, I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, that's kind of a big chunk. She literally took the whole mole off. So she said, when we get the results back, I will call you and we'll go from there. So three, four days later, I hadn't heard from her. So I was like, oh, thank goodness, it's nothing. I can move on with my life. One week later, she called me and she said, it is confirmed basal cell carcinoma. So the three most common types of skin cancer are basal cell, squamous cell, and melanoma. Of those three, the basal cell is the most common, but it is also the least scary. It is rarely fatal. It rarely metastasizes, which means it rarely spreads to other parts of the body. And it has a long latency period. So it could take years, it could take decades. In my case, it took decades for it to actually show up. However, if left untreated, it can grow and become quite disfiguring. So the doctor said, you have a couple of choices. You could either, we could either watch it and see what happens, or we could do the Mohs surgery, which means they go in, they take a tiny bit of skin, a margin around the area, then they biopsy. So you have to sit there and wait for the results. And then if it comes back that there are still basal cells in there that they have to get rid of, they'll go and they'll take a bigger margin around the area and so on and so forth until they get all of the cells. So this news to me was quite horrifying. I was like, what? What? I have skin cancer? 
parents are what? I mean, I shouldn't really be too surprised because it, it runs in my family. But I didn't, I mean, I didn't really think that this kind of thing happened to me. Why would this happen to me? So I told the doctor, I said, can I think about it? And she said, yeah. So I decided to call her back. And I talked to my mom. My mom has had most surgery done. And she said, you know what? It's like easy peasy, go in, get it done, and then forget about it. So I called the doctor back and I said, okay, I'm going to do the Mohs surgery. So we scheduled the Mohs surgery for about three weeks out. So October 19th, 2022, I went in to have my Mohs surgery done. And again, I walked there because it's less than a mile from my apartment. What they did is they told me to allot a three, four hour window to be at the doctor's office. And, and I'm thinking, well, they already did the biopsy. They took off the mole. It didn't look to me like I would need anything else done, right? So I'm like, I'm like, okay. I In my head, I'm thinking I'll be there mostly, most of an hour, right? So I went in, same doctor, same nurse, same dentist chair. They did the same process over again. They cleaned the area. They put some lidocaine, numbed me up, and then they started the surgery. So they took a little bit more precaution this time. They wrapped tissue around my face around the area and around my face and then the doctor wore two masks like she wore the translucent face masks in addition to the, um, the regular surgical mask on her face so that scared me a little bit and i'm going are you expecting a lot of blood and she said no no she said it's just to keep the area sanitized we don't want to get like hairs or anything you know in there and i was like okay <laughs> so then she cleaned the area she numbed me up again and she cut a tiny little margin of skin around where my my biopsy had been done and then she cauterized it so she took a little hot needle because i had to sit and wait for 45 minutes for the biopsy to come back so she took a hot needle and cauterized it let me tell you that that stunk it stunk <laughs> and that part was, it was the noise. I didn't really feel anything, but it was those two things. It was just, my heart was like. Then the doctor said, okay, it looks like your basal cell has spread under the skin. And I was like, oh my God, oh, oh my God, what? <laughs> so she said, we need to take a little bit more. So what she did, she did the same thing, numb me up clean the area, went back in for the surgery, took a little bit more around the area, then cauterized it, and I had to wait another 45 minutes. Another excruciating 45 minutes. The doctor came back in after 45 minutes, said, we found more under the skin. And at this point, I just, I just cried, you guys. I was like, how big is this hole going to be in my face? Oh my God. So same process over again. I had to wait another 45 minutes. After the third time, the doctor came in and she said, I think we have it. I think we got it all. By this time, you know, my nerves were kind of shot. So then she said, we're going to close, close the, the wound. I said, can I look at it? And the doctor said, are you sure? And I said, yes. Y'all don't look at it. Don't look at the hole in your face. It was horrifying to see a two inch hole in my face going all around my nose, up my cheek, into my tear duct. I cried right there in the doctor's chair. And she said, don't worry. I promise it will look better. Promise it will look so good. So she went in for the stitches, numbed me up again. Same deal and she started on the stitches. So the stitches were the thing that bothered me most <laughs> because I had a hole in my face and they're taking both sides and they're closing them up. So I felt like I was wearing a mask and what they were doing is they were going in with the stitches and my skin was closing. So I literally felt like both sides of my face were being pulled. It was the strangest feeling and it didn't hurt it was just so strange. I felt like I was wearing a leather mask. And you know, if you've ever worn a corset, 
and they take it in your back and they squeeze you into it and they pull the ties. That's what it felt like on my face. So it felt like that's they were tying up a shoelace on my nose. So when the stitches were done, she said, do you want to see what it looks like now? And I said, yes. Again. <laughs> She handed me, she handed me the mirror. I took a look at the stitches and again, I cried because I had a huge scar going up the side of my nose with 10 stitches. I was like, oh my God, is this what I'm gonna look like? She said, no, it's gonna heal. It will heal well. She said, do not worry my poor little brain is freaking out and I'm just, I'm just devastated. I got to admit you guys, I was devastated. So she put the bandage on and she said, okay, do not take this off for three days. So I had to walk around with a huge bandage on my face for three days. Thank goodness for the masks. Well, after a few days when I was used to looking at myself with this bandage, it was fine. Life could be worse. They got it all. They got all of the basal cell, so it could be worse. After three days, I took the bandage off and I had an appointment to come back in one week and get the stitches taken out. So a week later, I went back in, I had the stitches taken out and that was like nothing. That was easy peasy. She just literally went in, snipped them. It didn't hurt. The only one that I felt a sting was the one up near my tear duct right here. And as she pulled on it, that one pinched a little bit, but the others didn't hurt. I was literally in and out in five minutes. It didn't take long at all. So now you guys, one month later, after I had my stitches taken out, this is what my scar looks like. And it looks like nothing. It looks great. I am so, so thankful for my amazing doctor. She was amazing. Her bedside manner was amazing. The nurse was amazing. Everybody at my dermatology office, it was just freaking amazing. I'm so, so thankful for them. And also the doctor told me to use a silicone gel. So every night I would put on my little silicone gel and kind of, she told me to massage it to break up the scar tissue. So I honestly think in another few months, it's barely gonna be even visible at all. And I'm wearing makeup right now and you can't even see it candidates for basal cell carcinoma tend to be fair-skinned people like myself, people who use tanning beds, people who were out in the sun a lot during their youth, people who do not wear sunscreen. In my case, when I was a kid and I was a teenager, sunscreen wasn't a thing. In fact, we used to slap on tanning oil and baby oil and go out on the back porch and sit in the sun for hours to get that lovely golden bronzed glow. That was our thing. And since it takes a long time to show up, I had just started to notice it now. Over the past 10 years, I've actually been pretty good about wearing sunscreen. So I did feel a little bit betrayed by my skin when I found out that I had basal cell. I was like, I've been taking care of you. Dude, what's the deal here? <laughs> However, now I wear sunscreen all the time. All the time, except while I'm sleeping. I work at home next to a window, so I wear sunscreen while I'm working. I wear sunscreen if I have to walk across the street to get groceries five minutes away, always wear sunscreen. Always, always, always. And all of my products have sunscreen in them. Just giving you a quick synopsis of what I use. This is the sunscreen that I use on my face. It has 50 SPF. I use a BB cream on top of that, that has 30 SPF sunscreen. The foundation, if I'm wearing foundation that day, has 50 SPF in it. And then the powder on top of my foundation has 30 SPF in it. So when you wear multiple products with SPF in it, make sure the ingredients themselves are similar. So for instance, if you wear one, you have one product with titanium dioxide in it, make sure they all have titanium dioxide in it, if that makes sense. Or they're gonna conflict and they could degrade each other. So I'm gonna link to a video below that talks all about that because I don't know much about that and I can't, <laughs> I can't regurgitate what she says, but an excellent video. Also, 
when I go out in the sun, I wear a wide brimmed hat because UVA and UVB rays do not just come from the sun, but they get reflected off of everything around you. So in addition to wearing sunscreen, I wear a wide brimmed hat and I wear sunglasses to cover the skin around my eyes. Some of you guys might think, that's a little excessive. However, when you've had a two inch hole taken out of your face, it is no longer excessive. So overall, this whole process was a little bit scary, but stay strong and you can do it. I did it. I walked to the doctor's office, had my surgery, sat in the office and cried, held my own hand, walked home by myself. So if I can do it, you can do it. And I mean, if you have any questions, leave me, you can feel free to leave me questions in the comments below. I can't guarantee that I will have all the information because I am not a fount of knowledge, but I will do my best to answer any questions. So thanks so much for watching, you guys. I love you so much. Be sure to always wear sunscreen and don't forget, always let your freak flag fly. I will see y'all next time. Mwah.